Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Click PLC logging data with time and date stamp. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the Click PLC can perform indirect addressing. This means that I can ask for information to be moved to and from locations in the PLC using a pointer that will indicate the address. Now Stephen Cubby in the 7 Habits of Effective uh, People said begin with the end in mind. This is especially true when looking at storing or logging data within the programmable logic controller or PLC. So up here I've got my, my overview that we're going to be doing and we're going to take the current value in consecutive channels and we're going to use indirect addressing with a for next loop to actually store data within the uh, PLC. So let's take a look first of all at our hardware and what you'll see is that we are uh, we have a, our click PLC here and we're connected through Ethernet to the programming software right now to monitor the, the information that we're going to be looking at. So let's uh, look at the um, Click PLC software package and what we'll have is we will contain our information that we're logging in 10 consecutive registers and these are DS1 to DS10 and DS1 will contain our current bit information to log then we'll use a timer value to log in DS2 then we'll have additional storage in 3 and 4 but we won't be uh, putting anything in there right now and then DS5, 6 and 7 will be our year, month and day from our real time clock in the, in the Click PLC. Then we'll have our minute, our hour, minute and second in DS8, 9 and 10. So that's what we're actually trying to do is just log or get all the information gathered into our consecutive channels so that we can continue with our logging. So the first one line here takes my uh, it uses a copy command and it copies uh, 8 bits, 1 to 7, or 7 bits, and stores a DH1. And then it takes DH1 and stores a DS1, which is the start of our logging parameters. So we can use any bits and we can build up that, that location and then move that into the DS1. So that's our on off conditions. Then we'll take our test timer. And we'll use the normally close that same our timer one, which is our test timer. And we just put a set point of 9,999 and just gives us a value here that we can see change. And then we take that value and we move into DS2. Then we set up our real time clock. So again, DS3 and DS4 are left blank right now. So we start with DS5. And we take our, our year, month, and day, which is D, or SD20, 21, and 22. And we store it at DS5, 6, and 7. So we use that copy to store those uh, three registers into those locations. Then at the same time, we take our hour, minute, and second, which is in D, uh, SD24, 25, and 26, and store it at DS8, 9, and 10 to complete our information that we have for our uh, loop that we want to uh, or the data that we want to uh, take a look at. So let's go back to our diagram again and the next part we want to do is we use the for next with indirect addressing to store that into our data storage area. So if we look down here you see our indirect addressing. Our first scan will actually move 100 into DS99. Now DS99 will be our indirect address pointer. So if it contains the value 100, then what we want to do is we want to store um, our information at DS100 to DS4100. So here is our second one. So our first scan flag will zero out or reset our indirect pointer. We also have our indirect pointer if it's greater than the 4100, meaning DS4100, then we're going to reset our indirect pointer as well. Then what we do is we're going to always do this. 
Okay, we're going to take the indirect pointer and we're going to store it into a temporary location. We're going to call this DS98. And then what we're going to do is put a 1 into DS97. So that's going to start our for next loop. It's going to tell us um, what loop we're on in order to get this data from our, our um, series of data that we put in together like DS1 to DS10. Then what we'll do is start our for next loop. Now our for next loop will have 10 representing those 10 registers that we want to move into locations. So DS1 to DS10. So the first through, copy through the pass, we're going to copy uh, DS, uh, our pointer 99, which contains DS100. And then we're going to increment our uh, DS97, which can tell, tells us what loop we're on through that loop. And then we're going to increment DS99 to 101. And then we're going to do the second pass, etc., until we get all 10 registers into that memory location that we want to put them in. So let's just take a look now at our copy. So this is we're in a loop and it's going to uh, do this instruction, then this one, this one, then the next. It'll go back to the uh, for loop again. So here we have D, DS, or we're going to copy DS90, or uh, DS, <laughs> we're going to copy DS with a pointer location of DS97, which is our time through the loop. So it starts at one, and every time we go to the next, it goes two, three, four, five, and it's going to point to DS1 to DS10, which is our data that we've put in consecutive channels. So each time through the leap, it's going to do that. And it's going to move it to the pointer location, which is going to be DS100 at start. And then it's going to go to DS110 uh, at the end. Then each time through the loop, we take our indirect address pointer, DS99, and we increment by one. And we take our loop through and we increment by one. Now what you'll notice is we're currently right now, it's showing 100 and it's showing 11. It's because we're, it will always show it this within the scan. So it's going to go 10 times through, through the scan before it hits the, uh, the end of the program and go back to the beginning again. So it's actually executing right now. So let's take a look at our uh, log parameters. And here is, let's move this down a little bit. Here is our current log bits. We have our current test timer, you see counting up, and our additional data, one, two, and then we have the year, month, and day, and then we have the hour, minute, and second of the day. And our indirect pointer right now is pointing at 100, and then we have our location that we're actually doing this right now, which is DS100, which is zero. You can see my timer value here is the same as my timer value up here. So as I'm executing this right now, it's actually storing those 10 variables into the registers that I want. And then we have our year, month, day, hour, minute, and we have our second down here, which is matching our second currently. So going back to the program, our next thing is once we're done our loop after our next statement, we're going to reset the temporary indirect address back to the original. So here we're taking our temporary value in DS98 and storing it back into our indirect pointer at DS99. What this will do is remember at the end of our loop, our, our uh, DS99 pointer is actually pointing now to um, 111. So because of that, we have to reset that back to 100 and this continuously loops. So let's, uh, let's just go down a little bit more in our program. And the last part of our program is going to actually be what happens with our 
um, edge. Okay, and so how do we actually get this to log in based on event or time? In our case here, what we're going to do is I'm going to um, we'll expand this over a little bit, and what you will see is that we have an always off flag. So we have a, a one minute or a one minute clock here, which is SC8. And when it gets a leading edge, it can add 10 to our indirect address pointer. However, what we want to do is we want to control this through this video. So what we're going to do is use our test bit um, C1 and C1 will actually um, allow us now to log to the next 10 locations in our storage. So if we look at our map again, our information, we've done, we've done our storage, we've contained 10 consecutive channels, we've used a for next loop, indirect addressing, and we're now storing it here. What we have to do next is activate the next one to store the next variables that we want when we want to do that. In our case here, it's going to be on uh, C1, and we're going to uh, turn it on in order to um, make those bits go into the next 10 of our storage location. So all we're doing is adding 10 to our indirect address pointer. So let's do that. So we'll turn on our edit. We'll take our bit. We'll turn that on. And once we turn that on, our, and then turn that off again, what we will find is that our indirect address pointer now is 110. And if I look down, my DS100 to DS109 is my first 10. They've now frozen, and that's what the information is now logged into the PLC. And you can see my next from DS10 to DS19, 119, is now being updated with the information. Then my next one is DS120 to 129. And so the next leading edge of my uh, C1 bit, let's turn it on again, and then off. You'll see that now we're at 120. And if I look down at 120, you can see now this information is getting updated as we expected, and our previous information is now logged. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.